Hey guys, welcome back to Adam the Science Tutor. And today we're gonna to be talking about the pentose phosphate shunt. This is a, I have another video on it about the different alternative pathways it can take, but this is the main deal about what happens and where it's at. And this is just a uh, branching off of glycolysis. So our main products are gonna be NADPH. Um, this is gonna be important for uh, biosynthesis of lipid molecules, protein molecules, and it's just an energy source. So it's another way we could break this for indirect energy like we do NADH2 or um, other indirect energy sources. So that's one of the main products. The other main product is going to be ribose 5-phosphate, which we can use for um, synthesis of nucleotides. So ribose 5-phosphate, and that's probably our main product of the bunch. But um, NAD, NADPH is another one. So that's what we get. And... This is off glycolysis, as I mentioned before, and this is all occurring in the cytosol. Our starting material and where it's gonna branch off in the glycolysis is glucose 6-phosphate. If you're not sure where that is, then check out my glycolysis video where I show you what glucose 6-phosphate is and where that starts at. I'm trying to figure out where I put it. face cam as usual. It happens in cytosol of the mitochondria or of the cell, pardon, in the cytosol of the cell. So, cool. So let's begin. All right, so we need glucose 6-phosphate, and that's our the beginning of our shunt, and it's off glycolysis, so we are no longer going through glycolysis, and we're gonna create a six, and this one's a big mouthful, but it's 6-phospho-glutolactone. -glu so 6-phosphoglutolactone, which is um, terribly hard to say. And our enzyme that's going to help us do this is going to be our G6-phosphate um, dehydrogenase. And what we know about dehydrogenases, which I talked to before, is that they're an indirect energy source or it takes energy. But this is going to be our indirect energy source. And I told you guys we're going to get NADPH. So that'll be probably the indirect energy source. So we have NADP to NADPH. So that is going to be our first indirect form of energy. And this is one of the more important enzymes because it is a key regulatory enzyme. And it is important because if we want to stop this or if we don't want to, or if we want to start this, uh, the pyruvate shunt or phospho pentose phosphate shunts, then we're going to need some inhibitors to stop it or some um, activators to start it. So I made a mistake here. It's negative inhibition. I'm gonna go back and fix it, but negative inhibition is NADPH and ribose 5-phosphate because those are our products. If we have our products, we don't need this to occur anymore. So that'll be a negative or inhibitor of our key regulatory enzyme. Our activator will be NADP plus. So if we have NADP, then we could use NADP to make NADPH. So that is one of the uh, activator. So cool. Now we have 6-phosphoglutolactone and we're gonna have a simple um, exchange here uh, and it's just done by lactase. Lactase is gonna be the enzyme and lactase doesn't have any, in, uh, doesn't have any energy products but it's gonna take water and make a hydrogen molecule. So we're going to take H2O and make a hydrogen molecule. And it's no big deal. It's not really much. So it doesn't uh, require too much. And the product that we're going to make is 6-phosphoglutinate. So 6-phospho. Let me do it in black. 6-phosphoglutinate. Cool. So, and we could also kind of summarize that for 6-PG, but... 6-phosphoglutinate. So that's cool. We're going to go over here. And this is going to be another form of energy or indirect energy. So we're going to get another NADPH and NAD+. So NADPH is made. So what does that tell us about the enzyme? Well, it most likely will have dehydrogenase in it. So let's get 6-phosphoglutinate dehydrogenase. So 6-phosphoglutinate dehydrogenase. And this is our second indirect energy source. 
And we're also going to have one more molecule coming off of it, which is very important. And it's extremely important because if without this, we cannot make our pentose, which is the point of this. It's our main product. So we're going to have CO2. That carbon is going to be used to make our pentose. So we're going to lose a carbon here. And that carbon is going to be picked up to make ribosyl 5-phosphate, which we're not at right now. Second ingredient of direct used to make next product. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So ribosol, oh, my bad, ribulose 5-phosphate. Ribulose 5-phosphate is then gonna have a simple transformation uh, enzyme called pentose phosphate isomerase. So pentose phosphate isomerase. Isomerase is a enzyme name for things that just change the uh, configuration and make main, minor changes to uh, the molecule structure. And that's going to make our main product and our final product ribose 5-phosphate. So cool. Ribose 5-phosphate. And that's our main product. So yay. That is the, the uh, phosphate pentose shunt, uh, pentose phosphate shunt. So our main product, ribose 5-phosphate, as I mentioned below, or uh, earlier, is going to be, it's going to be good for our uh, synthesis of nucleotides. And um, it can only really occur when our body is doing really good on energy, as it's a shunt for glycolysis. So if our body's in demand for energy, we're not going to be making ribose 5-phosphates. So it only happens to our body in good times. And um, NADPH is only really used... In, um, in in supply or in preparations for the future. So that's about it. So thank you guys for tuning in. My name is Adam, the Science Studio, and I'll catch you guys next time.